good day my scholars, this is my school channel and my name is Abiola. Remember in this channel you will be joining me to solve the jam semester pass question for the subject chemistry, the year 2011. Do not go anywhere, stay with us because we will be right back. So let's start with question 26. So we have this um, ionic equation, all right? So in the equation above, y is what? So this is just very easy to tackle. Um, if you have the concept or the balance ionic equation, okay, for the redox reaction between uh, acidified potassium tetra ozomanganate 7 and ion 2 tetra ozosulfate 6, okay, when you have this equation, when you are familiar with the balance a unique equation you will know that it is eight moles of hydrogen ions that is missing out okay so this is what we are looking for 8h plus all right to give you this this and this so it's just the balance a unique equation or for the redox reaction okay between kmno4 and feso4 so what we are looking for is this so the correct option here should be what we are looking for on the screen we have option D, so option D is the correct option. 27. Given that M is the mass of a substance deposited during electrolysis, and Q is the quantity of electricity consumed, okay, then Faraday's first law can be written as what? So when you are very, if you are very familiar with Faraday's first law, you just like this, describe the relationship between the mass okay in a proportional relationship to the quantity of electricity okay during the course of electrolysis so it's really relationship between m and q m for mass q for quantity of electricity you're talking about i times t okay so um e here is the electrochemical equivalent all right of the substance so if m since m not if now since m is directly proportional to q Okay, that means M equals to KQ. Now, the K in this sense now is E for electrochemical equivalent. So, M equals to EQ. If you want to break it down, then I can say something like M equals EIT, where Q equals to IT. Okay, so the correct option here is option B, M equals EQ. Question 28. The impurities formed during the laboratory preparation of chlorine gas are removed by what? By water okay so this is how it goes you are talking about oxidation of conch hcl okay using kmno4 all right so immediately you introduce some drops of conch hcl chlorine gas and hcl2 these gases will be evolved all right so to remove hcl from this so that you can get a pure sample of chlorine gas what you do is you pass this mixture through water okay there hcl will now dissolve in water okay then the pure chlorine gas that you have gotten now since you have removed the impurities by passing it through water you can now use h2so4 okay to dry up the pure sample of this gas so the impurities formed during the laboratory preparation of chlorine gas are removed by water h2 so the correct option here is option a question 29 the effect of the presence of impurities such as carbon and sulfur i'm going to add to it silicon phosphorus manganese and what have you on iron is that they lower the melting point okay from something around up 15 30 degrees i mean 1530 degrees to about 12 1200 degrees okay so what they do is they lower the melting point okay and we are talking about peak iron it has less industrial use so even going to the types of iron we have big iron we have cast iron we have rod iron and as well we should also note that iron is the second most abundant metal after aluminium in the earth's crust so going back to the question giving us the effect of the presence of impurities such as carbon and sulfur on iron is that the lower its melting point option d is the correct option 30 
a few drops of conch HNO3 is added to an unknown solution and boiled for a while. If this produces a brown solution, the cation present is likely to be what? Okay, so we know that ordinarily this solution has the color green. Okay, so when you now do all of these processes and you introduce conch HNO3, alright, trouser nitrate 5 to it, okay, and you realize that the color changes from green, okay, to brown, that tells you that the cation present is Fe3 plus. It has the brown color, why Fe2 plus? You are looking at the green color. So, if this produces a brown solution, the cation presence is likely to be this. Option C is the correct option. Question 31. The bleaching action of chlorine gas is effective due to the presence of water. Okay, The bleaching action or capacity or ability is due to the um, due to the interaction it has, it has with water okay to produce oxochlorate one acid okay this acid is unstable okay it decomposes and it releases oxygen this oxygen now oxidizes the dye all right to form a colorless compound so the bleaching ability or the bleaching action of chlorine gas is effective due to the presence of water so the correct option here is option b for water 32 in the laboratory preparation of oxygen, okay, from the decomposition of potassium trioxochlorate 5, okay, the dried oxygen, how do you dry the oxygen? By using conch H2SO4 or anhydrous calcium chloride, okay, take note of that. So once it is dried, if you want to collect it, it will be over mercury. So the correct answer here is option B for mercury. Like I said earlier, this and this is to dry the gas okay so the correct option once again um going back to the question in the laboratory preparation of oxygen dried oxygen is usually collected over mercury option b is your correct option 33 the property of conch h2so4 concentrated or conch h2so4 that makes it suitable for preparing hno3 is it what okay it's it's boiling point okay you should know that conch h2so4 has the ability to displace um, volatile acids from their corresponding sorts okay this depends on the high boiling point of conch h2so4 uh, this is of course used in qualitative analysis to check for or to detect acid radicals at least a good number of them so the property of conch h2so4 that makes it suitable for preparing no 3 is that dependent on its high boiling point and of course this experiment requires an all glass apparatus okay because there will be attacks on the cork or rubber that is being used so it should be an all glass apparatus or setup experiment so the correct option here is option a high boiling point question 34 bronze is preferred to copper in making of medals coins sculptures general metal work specifically okay in this question bronze is preferred i'm just talking about the uses of bronze okay to make um things i've just shared now so bronze is preferred to copper in the making of metals why because bronze at first is a combo between copper and tin 90 percent copper and 10 percent tin so it is stronger than copper okay at first it can withstand chemical attacks and it has more attractive appearance so that is why we prefer to use bronze instead of tin in making of metals so bronze is preferred to copper in the making of metals because it is stronger option a is the correct option do not forget that we have made tools available for you all you need to do check out the link in the description below once you click on it it's going to take you to the my school website okay right there you can get the my school mobile app or the my school software so join me as we solve question 35. the constituents of baking powder that makes the dough to rise is what is sodium bicarbonate okay so um baking powder you're just talking about um the presence of this all right and sodium bicarbonate and a weak acid so but the main constituent that we are looking for that makes the dough to rise is this sodium bicarbonate okay so this is um caustic soda all right this is washing soda 
all right so these two can be used to remove permanent hardness of water okay this is your washing soda this is your caustic soda so this sodium bicarbonate okay so this is sodium chloride your normal salt so the constituent of baking powder that makes the dough to rise is this okay sodium bicarbonate or baking soda so the correct option here is option a if you like to encourage us all you need to do is to hit that like button also do not forget to click on the subscribe button and always tap on this bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment just for you 36 the ability of carbon to form long chain or ring due to a strong carbon to carbon bond is referred to as catenation okay alkylation is a transfer of alkyl group from one molecule to the other all right acylation is the addition of the acyl group then carbonation we're going to talk about carbonated drinks like your soft drinks okay you are adding them um, you are introducing co2 there to retain that refreshing taste that you get from your soft drinks i don't want to mention it okay so we have the correct option here as option c this um, concept or this phenomenon is referred to as Cutting nation. 37. Which of the following compounds will undergo polymerization reaction? So at first, what is polymerization? You know, you're talking about um, two or more simple molecules linking together to form larger molecules. Okay, so what um, hydrocarbons are we looking at that undergo polymerization? We can talk about a thing, A T H Y N E or a tine, okay, whichever we want to pronounce that, okay, so when a tine undergoes polymerization, it forms the aromatic hydrocarbon benzene. Also, we have ethene, E-T-H-E-N-E, -E, found here, okay, so it undergoes polymerization to form polyethene, okay, or polychloroethene, so the correct option here is option A for ethene. An organic compound has an empirical formula CH2O and vapor density of 45. What is the molecular formula? So we can just use this uh, formula. Vapor density equals half of relative molecular. So that will be VD equals half of this. Okay. All right. So we are looking for this at first. So what do we do? It will be 2 times vapor density and we are giving vapor density as 45 that will be 2 times 45 that makes 90 so remember the empirical formula is CH2O right equals 90 all right so if you open up this bracket remember carbon that's 12 times n we have 12 n plus we have two atoms of hydrogen here, so that will be 2 times 1, that is 2 times n, 2n, okay, remember oxygen is 16, so 16, just one atom, 16 times n, we have 16n equals 90, 12 plus 2, that is 14, 14 plus 16, that is 30, so 30n equals 90, dividing both sides by 30, Zero strikes are zero. Three year one, three year three. So n is three. So let's replace n by three here. Yeah? Okay. So what do we have? We have CH2O into bracket n, which is three. So this is C3, right? Two times three, that is six. O3. This is lactic acid. Molecular formula for lactic. I see. So we have C3H6O3. Join me as we move back to the screen to secure this answer. C3H6O3 for lactic acid. That is found in option C. So option C is the correct option. At 25 degrees Celsius, Zimis act as catalyst. Okay, so we have this is glucose C6H12O6. Okay, to give you two moles of ethanol. All right, alongside carbon dioxide then 
we have right there energy. So the reaction above represented by the equation above is using useful in the production of ethanol. Okay, this is preparation of ethanol from starchy foods like potato, cereals like rice, maize, guinea corn, and what have you. You know, once you've processed it and you've gotten starch, okay, this starch is converted to maltose by the aid of the enzyme diastase. Okay, so once you have gotten maltose, you now introduce yeast. Yeast contains two enzymes that we are going to look into right now. Okay, so it contains uh, maltase, which breaks the maltose into glucose. Okay, then we are now talking about the zimis, okay, that decomposes the glucose into ethanol and this. Okay, so the equation above is useful in the production of ethanol option D, C2H5OH. Option D is the correct option. The number of isomers that can be obtained from butane, okay, C4H10, is what? Okay, when you talk about isomerism, you know, um, compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. And for alkanes to exhibit isomerism, at least there must be four or more carbon atoms, okay, structural isomerism. Okay, so the structural isomers of or the isomers simply put here the isomers of butane they are two the normal butane and the two methyl propane okay and butane normal butane or you can say butane and two methyl propane so two isomers for butane that is found in option d so option d is the option we are looking for the functional groups present in the compound above are what they are the hydroxy group and the allo group okay if the allo group you are talking about halogen atoms that is attached to a carbon chain if you want to do the naming of these compounds okay according to prefix all right you can refer to this as chloro generally the halogens we are talking about uh, chlorine which you can identify as chloro okay uh, bromine bromo iodine iodo and what have you so the functional groups here they are the hydroxy group and the allo group the halogen group so we can find them in option d so option d is the correct option don't forget that the link right there in the description below is waiting for you once you click on it, it's going to take you to the my school website that is the best spot for you to ask your questions okay so where we have our several scholars referred to as my schoolers they are going to give you the best of solutions that you can ever get. So join me as we solve the next question. Two organic compounds, K and L, uh, were treated with a few drops of felling solution, respectively. Okay, so you should know that felling solution is a mild oxidizing agent. It contains copper two complexes. All right, so uh, compounds K and L were treated with felling solution. Okay, K formed the brick red precipitate because this um copper two complexes all right it now became copper one complex which has a brick red coloration because it's been reacted or yeah it's been reacted with the compound k identified as alkanals okay so this is the test to distinguish between alkanals and alkanals also you can use um, the tolerance reagent as well as a mild oxidizing agent as well so this is definitely a test to distinguish between alkanals RCHO, alkanons, okay, RCOR, take note of that. So, alkanons are referred or also referred to as aldehydes, alkanons as ketones. So, K formed a brick red precipitate, Y hell remains unaffected. The compound K is an alkanal, compound L is an alkanon. So, the correct option here is alkanon, option C. You may have better steps that you'd like to share. Please, we are very much interested. All you need to do is to use that comment section below. Kindly indicate the question number and the explanations you'd like to share. Which of the following statements is true about 2-methyl propane and butane? Okay, these are structural isomers for butane. Okay, this can be referred to as N-butane, normal butane. And this is 2-methyl uh, propane. So, they are structural isomers. Okay, you remember isomerism. So, uh, let's look at the statement that is true about them. Statement A, they are not members of the same homologous series. This is incorrect. Okay, we are talking about butane that has two structural isomers, 2-methyl propane and N-butane. So, they are members of the same homologous series. B, they have the same boiling point. This is incorrect. We know that structural isomers they have identical chemical property but different physical property and boiling point is a physical property so this is incorrect c they have different numbers of carbon atoms this is incorrect okay they have the same number of carbon atoms if you count them 
together. All right, so statement D, they have the same chemical properties because they are structural isomers for butane, C4H10. So the correct option here is option D, they have the same chemical properties. With conk H2SO4 as catalyst, the reaction between ethanoic acid and ethanol gives you ethyl, ethanoid, and water. This is an esterification reaction, okay? Saponification, making of soap, neutralization between acid and a base, okay? So the correct option here is option A for esterification. We have in the diagram above, X is the word. So this at first is an exothermic reaction, okay? Take note of this. So we have the reactants. Here we have the activation energy. This is the enthalpy change, which we have a negative value for an exothermic reaction. Then we have the products formed here. So reaction co uh, coordinates and energy. So in the diagram above, X is the enthalpy change. Activation energy is here. So the correct option is option B. Choose the correct answer in the option above. The options above which of the following is a primary amine so when you talk about amine they are characterized by the presence of the amino group okay so and uh, this is um a scenario whereby the uh, an hydrogen atom or hydrogen atoms they are being substituted by the acyl or the aryl group okay so a primary amine that, that that tells you the kind of um the types of amines that we are looking at primary secondary or tertiary based on the substituted hydrogen atoms okay so primary amine an example is your methyl amine and that is found in option b so option b is the correct option the principle of column chromatography is based on the ability of the constituents of the mixture okay to move up the paper strip okay just like the solvent is moving as well at different speeds so this will now make the constituent to be separated on different spots okay on the paper strip when it is being removed and you can apply some coloring so and this depends on um, some factors okay like how well the solute is being absorbed by the paper and how well the solute dissolves in the solvent that's just a side information so this is dependent on the movement of the solutes okay or the constituents at different speed in the column. So option A is the correct option. We've come to the end of this video segment, but there are more wonderful segments to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button. Also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video content.